On this episode of Primal Plate, we're doing a game day special. We're gonna make three recipes in one. That'll be perfect wild game recipes for your big game get together. We're gonna make some venison sliders, some teal poppers, and some barbecue squirrel wings. So to start with, we are gonna make the venison sliders. So we have two venison roasts here and some bacon to add in for fat. Whenever I butcher a deer, I pretty much cut it all into roasts and steaks because a roast can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be a roast. So where these easily could have been roasts, today they're gonna to be turned into burger. So to start with, we're just gonna trim these up a little bit. You can see on this one, there's some silver skin and it doesn't have to be perfect. This stuff is pretty obvious and that's gonna clog up the grinder. So we'll just try and get rid of that quick, but it's not gonna be like a perfect trim job by any means. So you can use basically anything from a deer because a lot of people use like the grind pile, you know? Right. But this is what you had on hand or? Yeah, I mean for my, what I would make burger, I want it to be a little cleaner than what I would do like my typical grind out of because my grind pile, that's like sausage and other stuff that has more flavoring. That's me personally. You know, I want my stuff to taste really good because right. I eat a lot of deer. So the stuff that I grind in a sausage is the, the lowest quality stuff. But like you look at this, like that is just like pure meat there. And there's no reason that necessarily needs to be made into sausage. That's going to make great burger. So once we get that kind of trimmed, we're just gonna cube it up into pieces that will fit through our grinder. Our grinder we're using today is small. It's one that goes on a KitchenAid mixer, which I would definitely recommend um, anyone to buy if you or your spouse has a KitchenAid. Um, the attachments, I think, I don't know, 50 bucks um, versus spending hundreds on an industrial grinder. Now, you wouldn't wanna grind a whole deer this way, but for these, for what we're doing today, where we're just making a little bit of burger, it's perfect. We'll also take and just cut up this bacon into chunks so it'll go through the grinder. Just get the fattiest, cheapest bacon that your grocery store offers. Because all you're really in it for is the fat and then the flavor that comes from the bacon. Could you go straight into your meat or do you just add this for people getting together that aren't used to Yeah, you meat? absolutely could go straight meat. What I would do in that situation is once the meat's ground, I mix in some barbecue sauce or some ranch dressing. That holds the meat together in, because the fat's not there and that also adds flavor. But since we're having a special get together, I wanted to be extra good, so went ahead and sprung for some cheap bacon. So we'll move over to the grinder. Okay, so we ground up our meat and our bacon and we're just gonna mix them as best we can and start making some patties. So, you can wear gloves if you want while you do this. I like to just get in and get dirty. All right, so now we've got our good and mixed and we're just gonna make a bunch of little patties. We're gonna have to do like two layers. So if you guys are watching this and you like our, our gear we are wearing, um, we got sweatshirts and shirts available in the shop right now. Go check it out and snag yourself one. We'd really appreciate the support. Over here we have um, some squirrel front legs, back legs, and backs that have been in a crock pot in some chicken stock for a couple hours. Uh, looks like they'll need just a little bit longer. They don't look great right now, but What's, what we're doing right now is just tenderizing that meat. When it's nice and tender and almost fall off the bone, we'll take these out and then we'll throw them on the grill quick to crisp them up. And then we're going to dunk them in uh, whatever sauce you might like. We're gonna do barbecue sauce. So next, we're gonna do teal poppers. Noah's gonna show us how to do them. He's been bragging about these things since I met him, so I'm really excited to see how it's done. The way I make jalapeno poppers, you know, a lot of people use jalapenos, but I use the Anaheim peppers. A lot of the times you have jalapenos that one may be spicy, one may not. Obviously these are a little bit bigger, uh, so I will show you how I cut them down to be the size of an actual jalapeno. So first off, a lot of the times people like to use a whole breast for a jalapeno. 
you kind of hide those other flavors. Well, it's not much of a popper at that point. It would be huge. Yeah. It's a lot of meat yeah. in one bite. So. so we're gonna cut these straight down the middle. So then another thing, when you are uh, cutting into these, you kind of want to look and if there's any BBs in there that you do see, uh, you want to get those out. And then when you do eat them, you want to be cautious because um, they are shot with a shotgun. So you, good chances out of one of these, you're going to find a BB. Anyone who's ever ate much duck has a memory of chomping down on yeah. a nice steel BB. Yeah, I, I knew somebody, they, they bit into one and cracked their tooth. Yeah, I believe it. So now that we are done cutting up the teal, we're just gonna set those aside for right now. So in theory, we got nine teal that are turning into 36 poppers. Another reason why I like to cut them up. So now we're gonna start with the peppers. And these, you know, you just cut that stem out and I come right down the middle to make two there. And this part, where you want to get all the seeds out. Now, do Anaheim's have any spice at all? No. With using these, I can control the heat that I want, which I do like spice, but sometimes, like I said, those jalapenos are way too hot. So then at this point, you got two halves. You're just gonna cut right here, which turns it into four. So when you put these suckers on the grill, how hot do you have the grill? I usually run it probably about 275. Really, when you cook these, you the easy way to not overcook the teal, because you do not want to overcook teal. Right. Easy way to tell is cook it till the bacon's done. Thanks. Once the once the bacon's done, teal is about a perfect medium rare. Yeah. Okay, so now that we got the peppers all cut up into little little chunks, now we're gonna cut up the bacon. So I like to cut them in half. Same thing I did with the peppers. So with the seasoning, um, you can use whatever uh, flavor you like. Uh, you may have one at home that you just prefer. Um, this one is Chickalicka Bam Bam from Fire and Smoke Society. Um, What's the flavor like on this? It's kind of, I mean, it's, it's got your saltiness, you got your garlic, um, and it's just got kind of like a a little spice taste, like a chili. Uh, so it is a little spicy. Yes, yeah. so that, that's where I get my spiciness. Yeah. So we're gonna take one of our peppers here. Gonna get some cream cheese. So then here's where I, I like to put the seasoning on the cream cheese. Mm. If you put it on the meat, it may slide off, it won't stick as well, but the cream cheese, it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll stay. Huh, I wouldn't have guessed that. So then after you have the seasoning on there, your cream cheese, then you grab one of your strips of meat that you just made with cutting it in half, it sits in there perfectly. So, so then you just take your bacon, you wrap that guy around, and that's where you grab a toothpick, stab it in, that's ready to go on the grill. Cook these all day in the uh, slow cooker, and then we put them on the grill here to kind of firm them up. Um, and we're gonna put them in this bowl, we're gonna cover them in barbecue sauce, and then we're gonna serve them up. We did go a shade long, like this is a front leg, so it's a smaller cut, and it's kind of falling apart, which is unfortunate. We went from about 12.30 to seven on low in the crock pot, that was a bit much. Could have dialed that back a little bit. But squirrel meat's really tough, so it's better to kind of cook it down and tenderize it. I've come to realize that a lot of people who eat wild meat aren't really interested in sports, myself included. And a lot of people who are really interested in sports don't eat wild meat. That's the great thing about the big game though, it brings these people together. No matter which team you are cheering for, or if you are just here for the commercials, if you can get together with family and friends and eat wild game while watching the big game, that's a win.